Hey everyone, Build 28 came out, and that means we're doing an Aether Ray video. With Build 28, we got two huge additions and new items to look at. The two huge additions being ten more or 20 more skill points and the devotion system. So let's just jump right into the skills, and I'm going to give sort of an overview um, of everything as usual again. So, uh, Albrex Aether Ray, what we do is we take and we max this out at 16 points. And then our gear kind of focuses on building up the points and the ability. And you can, with a little effort, get it to 26 out of 16. I'm running it at 25 out of 16 because of the chest piece I have. Um, switching out from what I had before. But generally, you cap this out because it's your main ability. Now, I did not max out Disintegration in this build. Instead, I maxed out Fabric of Reality, and I'll get to that reason in a second. But Disintegration is at 5 points. It'll jump up to plus 3 through the Haunt Relic and the plus 2 to all Arcana skills I basically have. So, in the next uh, level cap increase, I may jump Disintegration up. But right now, it's at 5, and it jumps up to 8 with our plus 2 disintegration skills. Um, just plus the skills. Um, in the rest of the tree, I have Inner Focus definitely maxed out. My Vin Sphere Protection is at level 10. And everything else you see here is 1 point wonders. Now, the only point in the Arcanist tree I'm considering dropping right now is actually Arcane Will. Because I hardly notice the total damage increase giving me any sort of benefit. And I'd maybe take that and throw it into Mental Alacrity or Disintegration. Um, or even or even Elemental Balance for that bonus crit damage. And actually the burn damage now is a pretty nice addition of burn damage. On the Demolitionist side of things, I have maxed out Canister Bomb. And I'll point out the reason again in a second. Um, three points in the concussive bomb. Vindictive flame is at is at ten, and I threw one point in Ulzen's wrath. For vindictive flame, the reason I focused on this is because of the defensive ability bonus, in addition to the fire damage retaliation thing and the health regen per second, are also both handy to have. And I think I'm gonna need two defensive skills for what I want to do with devotion when I get to the two defensive skills um, I'm shooting for in the next round of Devotion points that are coming out. Um, presumably in Build 29 and beyond. Because there are 25 Shrines um, right now. And I would assume there are maybe a couple more in Normal. And then they're going to do some for Elite slash Ultimate as well. But uh, yeah, for now... Um, or I mean for the future... And I can just get right into the Devotion... Um, what I'm shooting for in Devotion is possibly going to require defensive skills, and Vindictive Flame is going to be one of them. I mean, aside from it just being a good defensive ability to add tankiness to your character. So for Devotion, at Crossroads, I started with the um, Primordial primordial Point, because Aether Fire requires one Primordial uh, on the Imp. So I took the Imp, and I filled out the Imp to get Aether Fire. Initially, I clicked this on to Abrax Aether Ray, but I found it better to be on Canister Bomb. And the reason I put all of these points into Fabric of Reality and Canister Bomb is because with 10 Fragments, that's 10 chances, in addition to the first explosion, so technically 11 chances, for Aether Fire to proc. Aether Fire's duration also lasts about the duration of a stun from the Canister Bomb. So you're going to have targets that are stunned by the bomb, are just going to be sitting in the Aether Fire if the Aether Fire procs. It's awesome. It's awesome because Canister Bomb now is Pierce, which I don't care about, Fire and Aether, which are both my two damage types I do care about. And it's awesome to have it be an Aether ability now. So then I went down, actually. I, I, grabbed, the, I grabbed the Hawk. No, I had to grab... um. Okay, yeah. So the imp, <laughs> the imp gives you three points when you complete it into Eldrick. So what I did was I needed actually another point. I needed more points from Eldrick 
to get to the widow you need six so I went down to the hawk and I grabbed the three points for the hawk because it's just crit damage and offensive ability are really awesome for Albrecht's Aether Ray so it was just a quick little three point devotion grab and then I came up and grabbed the widow and the widow is aether damage offensive ability crit damage aether resistance more aether damage and arcane bomb arcane bomb I clicked Albrecht's Aether Ray because it's amazing on Albrecht's Aether Ray it's another giant chunk of aether damage it adds a burn on and it has a stun now the one second delay on it hmm that's a little that's a little bit of a drawback but I hardly ever notice it when I have the aether ray going and uh and things are like in the heat of the moment and I'm just burning everything with the aether ray while throwing or throwing canister bombs around you don't really notice the one second delay on it and it's a huge chunk of aether aether damage and it adds a four meter radius AOE with this chunk of aether damage essentially turning Albrecht's aether ray into an AOE so arcane bomb is really great on Albrecht's aether ray now what I'm aiming for next I have sort of the prerequisites kind of built up and the direction I'm going so I went to the sailors guide and filled it out for the these are some really handy defensive stats and 5% movement speed is really nice to have as well. But uh, I also I went here mainly for that 5 into Primordial. I also went to the Eel and grabbed up the 3 Eel stats, or 3 Eel dots, um, stars. Because, again, it's another 5 to um, Primordial, but also, like, the defensive ability and evasion and uh, avoidance and pierce resistance, all really handy defensive stats to have. Now I'm going to go and fill out the Viper. And the Viper gives Spirit a uh, chance to Energy Leech and Absorb and then Vitality Resistance and more. Um, and then reduces target resistance and 5% offensive ability. So the Viper also gives us 2 for Chaos and 3 for Primordial. That'll give us the 20 I want to get in Primordial. And it'll be plus 3 on Chaos. And I need to get to 8 Chaos. So my options are, after that, and I think I'm just going to go straight for the Vulture, because the Vulture um, is 5 points to complete it, and I don't really think there are any other quick and easy um, Chaos things to get that'll give me points um, for five, 5 Devotion points. So... Yeah, the Vulture is also another kind of more defensive E1, because it'll give us a lot of Leech Life Resistance, Vitality Resistance, and... I mean, the Cunning is eh, but uh, it's it's mostly going there for the five Chaos points. I could also go to the Jackal, because it's total damage, offensive ability, and energy, which is all handy for an Aether Ray build, and then maybe go and pick something else up, like the Ghoul, Fiz uh, let's see, physique, health regen, health regen, physique, spirit, ghoulish hunger. I don't know if I have the space for that one, unfortunately. Um, yeah, or the bat, but again, I don't know if I actually have the space for twin fangs, and that would be pointless on this build. Um, flame torrent might not be bad here, <laughs> but yeah, anyways, I need to get... Five, or I need to get my um, my chaos up to eight, so I can come up here. The spear of heavens, spear of the heavens, is seven chaos, twenty primordial, and Eon's hourglass is eight chaos and eighteen primordial. And I want to get these two abilities. And I I'm assuming, and I might have to test this. I could hook it to Myvin's sphere and Vindictive Flame, because they're both chance one hit. So thirty three percent chance and hit with her spear of the heavens, for you to smite with. Lightning and Aether damage, which um would be a really fun ability to have. And then the the big thing I really want to get is 25% chance on hit, time stop, uh, petrified targets in an AOE around you, um, and these two together would be great defensive abilities added onto this build. And I may actually, if I get a respec potion, respec everything real quick just to test these out, um. But yeah, that's what I'm shooting for, for Devotion in the future. 
on top of the widow and the imp and um yeah now on the items 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 that's not items so in build 28 there are a few new items that weren't in the database specifically the spell sage boots i don't remember seeing these at all in graceful dusk and they're just really nice caster boots. Percent elemental damage, spirit, regen, movement speed, elemental res, skill disruption protection, uh, reduced entrapment, entrapment duration, and plus two to inner focus. Which is really nice and really awesome. So those replaced the desecrator treads I was using before. And I got doom touch gloves. And these are great for the warlock build. And they're still great for this build. The thing that's wasted is the percent chaos damage and plus two doom bolt, but it has percent crit, offensive ability, and casting speed, and plus two to Albrecht's Aether Ray. And I think that that's way too good to pass up, even though they don't mesh damage wise with the with the damages I'm using. Plus two to the beam is amazing. I mean, having the chaos damage, and this is part of the reason I went with Fabric of Reality, is we do get a tiny bit of bonus chaos damage. So having that doom bolt proc. It's not going to be an insignific insignificant amount of damage when it actually hits. So yes, uh, the Doom Touch gloves, um, probably the biggest upgrade, and that's also why I have the Aether Ray at twenty five out of tw out of sixteen. Um, the other new piece of gear is the Legion vestments, and I debated using the Legion vestments, the other crafted chest piece I have. Or the Outcast Wrath Vestments. And I think all three, like a, cr a good crafted chest piece, um, the Outcast's Wrath Vestments or the Legion Vestments are all really nice choices for a chest piece. I went with the <laughs> Legion Vestments more for the look than anything. Um, but also, I'm kind of trying to keep a good balance between uh, offense and defense. And the Legion Vestments had Chaos Resistance. And I do really want to keep my resistances built up, even though I have nothing on Vitality right now. And that's part of the reason I kind of want to go into the... Um, the Vulture, because of the Vitality Resistance. But also, yeah, the next, the next Viper is going to give Vitality Resistance as well. So um, I think all of the other gear is what I've had in the previous videos... The Spellweaver Spellblade is plus two to the Aether Ray, plus one to Elemental Balance. Casting Speed, Offensive Ability, Aether Damage, it's perfect. Um, leg Plates of Valor are really great defensive ability, or defensive uh, pants. Devil's Wrath, Waste, Devil, <laughs> Devil's Waste Guard of the Drangul. General's Crest of the Drangul. Uh, Mantle of the Weeping Eye I am still using. I haven't found anything that can replace it. Although the um, the uh, Outcast Wrath Mantle I considered using. But I still think that, that the Mantle of the Weeping Eye provides a better bonus because of the offensive ability on the shoulders while still having energy regen and aether damage and plus two to Escondras, which is huge. Um, the Legion has some shoulder pads as well that also would work, I think. Um, I also, on another character, I'm presently trying to farm her because you can make her an enemy or an ally. And on another character, I have her as an enemy because I think that's how you can get her helmet because her helmet is in the game as an item and it's a really good Aether helmet. So I'm presently farming up her hat basically on another character and i don't know if you get it through farming her or if you get it through her quests or whatever um yeah i'm just working on farming up her her helmet because i think that's going to be the helmet i use for this guy for a while but yeah i still have an arcana skill envisage of fortitude um let's see avarice of andronius uh two aether lord signets a rovari spellweaver codex of spell weaving with fire and aether Mental Weeping Eye, blah, 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 still Haunt. I don't actually think there are any new relics that go with this guy, even though we have access to Transcendent Relics now. And um, I put all of my, all of the 10 points into Physique, 
because uh, I knew I would be replacing something that provided a lot of physique, and um, I find physique hugely important for all characters. I mean, I could have gone straight in the spirit for just raw damage, but uh, my damage feels fine, so I went with physique. So now um, I am going to go and just run the fields outside of Fort Icon because uh, they have insane density and they kind of show the main weakness still of Abrax Aether Ray, which is um, energy consumption. But it's actually not that bad. Also, these guys are very Aether resistant. So when you actually see the damage I'm dealing, um, I might actually go to a second place. Just so, uh... Okay, so these... those These dots that happen are the Aether Fire procs. Let's see if we can get them. So, yeah. As you can see, the Canister Bomb is just a crap ton of damage. On top of having the, um... These. So, against this person, hopefully we'll get some... Well, she just died instantly. So, um, I'm kind of hoping to have one of the arcane bomb procs I can actually point at and say, oh, there it is. Oh, these guys will definitely have it. So you're going to see, um, there's like, oh God, it's so hard to see under this bridge. And it's so hard to click under this bridge because the character gets really confused. So that was an arcane bomb. You'll notice there's a big... It's basically a little mushroom cloud. So you get these little mini nukes on the Aether Ray. And it, it just feels awesome. And it looks awesome. And it's really powerful. And again, that's one of the reasons I went with Fabric of Reality. Because over Disintegration... Because it would affect the the arcane bombs. And you just saw I had to actually take an energy potion there. So, um... The Aether Ray also had a slight nerf in its damage. But in all honesty... In all honesty... I hardly noticed. And I'm kind of... I'm kind of playing a little heavy on shooting the beam. Normally I'm like, okay, I gotta make sure not to drain all my energy. Am I caught on something? Okay. Oh, yeah, there's a gap there. Looks like you can walk right through there. Yeah. This area, like, the Legion has landmines everywhere. I'm assuming those are the Legion's landmines. And uh, they'll hurt you, and they can actually hurt you quite a bit. Yeah, these big guys are actually really good for showing off the uh, the bombs because bosses are too. But um, the big like they're like rage hulks and flesh hulks that are back here, they'll actually be really good for showing off. Um, arcane bombs and how they can deal a lot of damage to things. So we can kill that guy, that guy. And now we just sit here and you'll see the arcane bombs pop. So they're very excellent burst damage when they proc. Yeah, but the only problem is out here there are a lot of enemies that have a lot of health. Have a lot of health. So... Um, you kind of, you'll kind of watch my energy just drain away super fast. A lot of health and aether res out here. That's sort of why I picked it. Specifically the flesh hulks and rage hulks. And for anyone wondering, the nerf was just to damage the damage of the Aether Ray in um, per per skill point, basically.
Yeah, these landmines are so damn annoying. <laughs> I don't remember the rift being over here. Normally the rift in this area is uh is like down here. Oh, and by the way, the Chthonic rifts um are the best place to level up in this build of the game. I I don't know any place that gets you more experience for the amount of time you're going to spend doing something. Everything is explosions with this character now, and it's pretty great. It's explosions and lasers. That's what the Aether Ace turned into, explosions and lasers. Yeah, also this area, like... The density of this area is really insane, too, so... You you do end up you do end up popping energy drinks out here a lot. It's also part of the fun of this area, it's just it's just everything like it's just tons and tons and tons of guys. So part of the reason I really want the Outcast Hood is because it has cooldown reduction on it while being an Aether helmet. Mostly because of getting the Canister Bomb fast. I don't know that I have a lot of cooldown reduction on this character. So, um... It's definitely something I'd like to to get just a tiny bit more of. Mainly, mainly so I can get uh get more canister bombs. More canister bombs means more aether fire. And there was our doom bolt proc off our gloves. It's been happening a couple a couple times. Yeah, I think Devastation is really the only attack skill I have left open for a Devotion ability like um, that Torrent of Flame ability. So this is also another new thing. Uh, you get little Aetherial Abominations pop off the... Uh, okay. Little a Aetherial Abomination... <laughs> I keep getting stunned, and it keeps throwing off my talking. So, the ethereal abominations pop out of the aether crystals right there. But anyways, that's a little aether ray demo on top of uh, talking about the build. And I think I covered everything. So, uh, thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this video. And I'll see you guys next time. For either... Well, I don't know the order of the... I'm recording a lot today. I don't know what the order is going to be. So, there's going to be a tour of Build 28 and the Devotion System in depth. So, uh, thanks for watching again. And I'll see you guys in one of those videos.